You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael from Arizona, and with me always are my good friends, Jay from the hills of Texas. And AK Mike in Texas. And this is a very happy Christmas Eve to all of you. We have a special guest joining us tonight, Mr. Tim Walker. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. Perfect. And Tim uh, is former Crash Cast and Angle of Attack, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, one of the one of the co-hosts on the crash cast, and one of the I guess it was a the the uh, the angle of attack was a spin off of the crash cast when Mike had to uh, step away from that, and uh, so Tim King and Carl Kettler and uh, Gravy and Cathead and I were the hosts there, so. Well, perfect. Well, we really really appreciate you joining us for this uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, special edition. So uh, we have some great news uh, coming uh, later in the show. Uh, Tim's going to kind of bring us up to speed on the Secret Santa thing. But uh, before we do all that, uh, Jay, did you get to fly at all this week? What did you do? Unfortunately, no. Uh, you know, doing stuff with the family. Didn't get out. Boring. Of course. Sorry. I know. Yeah, well. And Mike? Oh, yeah. I got some paramotor flying in. Oh, you're on your paramotor. He's got, it's like his laser focused on the paramotor. Well, I went to the, um, Sun Valley Flyers family fun fly, um, last week. So I was able to, uh, go out there and fly my, uh, my F-15 and a couple of my L-39 and a couple other airplanes. So it was really a good time. Uh, we do it every year, uh, here in Arizona in December and uh, all the families kind of come out and they get to see it and we provide donuts in the morning. And I think, um, lunch was provided by Subway. <laughs> and then, uh, we, uh, we basically had a good old time. We had, um, a couple of, uh, raffle tickets that were sold or 50, 50 raffle tickets. And some guys won some really neat prizes. Having said all that, I uh, was able to take about 1300 photos or so. Uh, uh, nice. So, so did you take all those pictures, Mike? I did. Yeah. Well, those sure are pretty did. awesome. I I got a chance to see him on the um, YouTube channel, and uh, th- that was pretty good stuff. I mean, really, yeah, he, he did a good job there. I, I had a quick question though: Is that electric and turbine, or or anything you wanted? We flew or? every we okay. flew everything. Yeah, uh, whatever the club allows. Um, a lot of the turbine jets were flying. Uh, Spencer flew his big um, one fifth scale and. Uh, I think there was a couple of guys that are getting ready for winter warbirds, which comes uh, in January, I think, second or third week in January. And uh, they had just finished uh, Tony Quist. He finished his Oscar. Um, it's got a big Sato three-cylinder, um, you know, radial in it. Sounds awesome. John was there with his um, uh, Sato, and uh, I think he's got a Mitsubishi or something, some Luftwaffe-looking airplane. I can't remember the name of it. And then they had a Japanese Zero um that Mike had as well. So it, the three of them flying together with these three radios coming down flight line was just incredible. I mean, it sounded really great actually. And, uh, as Mike alluded to, we did, uh, post a video. It's a rather lengthy one. You know, the problem with, uh, taking so many photos is that there were so many good ones. I didn't want to leave anybody out. So I just kept, you know, I'd be like, Oh, this is a good photo. Oh, this is even better photo. And, uh, by the time I got just downloading all these photos, it turned into about 14 minute video. So, <laughs> Sorry for the long uh, video there, but if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, you can see it and um, just watch it at your leisure. And you comment, know, when you but... said you said you had thirteen hundred videos, and then you said you had a um, pictures. A, a, I had thirteen hundred pictures. pictures. I mean, pictures, and you and you you recorded all that stuff and put it on a video. I was like, okay, so he's probably going to do like a half a minute per picture, and then he's going to be. <laughs> 1300 said that's going to be so long it's going to be good. but then i looked at it i was like wow this is incredible because you did a really oh, nice thanks. job of clicking through them and and uh you know it was always something to look at it was cool very nice well i appreciate that and uh you know kudos goes to uh all you apple users because uh, i just put it into iMovie and it pretty much does most of it for me <laughs> so anyway we well, Mike, uh we had a good time it, it still sounds like a great improvement because normally our our normal you know uh 
process for doing this is we show up in an event, we do something, we're like, wow, it's all this neat stuff. And what happens? Hey, did somebody bring a camera? Uh, no. Yeah, nobody. Did, you know, yeah. uh, or yeah. I brought a camera. How many pictures did you take? Uh, one. What's it a picture of? Oh, it's the floorboard of the car. I was trying to see if it was working. And then we never take pictures or we never bring out our, our cards or, you know, we never do. It's yes, always, exactly. we never take anything. So this is a fantastic uh, improvement to what we've done before in the past. So that's, and that's I got to job. fly as well. Cause normally when you do that, you know, you're kind of stuck with uh, doing just the, right. the video work or whatever. I will say that I did take my GoPro with all my new GoPros, you know, really cool uh, gimbals and all that stuff. Didn't take any video. I just uh, took okay. Pictures. Well, look, that's for next time, man. You're, you, yeah. We've got baby steps, I'm, right? I'm you learning know? that I need a staff for this because you a guys staff. are lame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, I was able to have a good time, and uh, that was kind of the flying I did um, over the weekends. So uh, any other Christmas. funny stories from when you were out there flying? Anybody near misses? Any uh, collisions? Any uh, fantastic saves? Anything weird that you saw when you were out there? Mm. No, other than uh, I know he's going to hate me for this, but um, Barry crashed his Predator. He uh, got Ooh. too slow on final. He's got a turbine from Pilot RC that's a turbine Predator. And he's been flying these really low, slow approaches that look awesome. And they're really great photos. I got to, you know, right up until gravity photos. sucks. Yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. But he was coming in for landing and no wind, and he just got way too slow and it snapped on him. And he actually, believe it or not, recovered it. Uh, which I was really shocked because he was pretty low and, you know, when the airplane snaps over, it goes inverted and he kept it coming all the way around and uh, kind of cobbed the power on it, but it didn't really help because he was just too slow and it took too long to spool up. So it, it basically touched down, but it touched down right on the side of the runway, not like on the dirt part. And it folded up a gear and then it sloped down to the fence. So there's literally, you can see the airplane in slow motion coming in and there's full rudder and full steering and it's just sliding through the gravel. So uh, needless to say, chain link fences are incredible, incredibly good cheese graters because it just, you know, ground off the yeah. <laughs> ground off the wing. So Mike, once again, I, I, I love Arizona for this time of the year because as yes. you're talking, hey, it's the middle of winter and blah, blah, blah. And I'm out flying every single day because it's 70 to 80 degrees, which the right. rest of the nation, everybody's freezing to death. But uh, and that's wonderful. But the thing I hate about Arizona is that any plane, anytime you miss the runway or near misses, you're landing on 60 grit sandpaper. Every oh, single much. time. And, and it pretty much yeah. grounds your plane down to nothing, which would be just a minor <laughs> blowing it off. And, oh, that looks about right, you know? This is true. On grass, you just. It's a major repair or, you know, a, a, yeah. not a super major repair, but, you know, now you have more work to do because you yeah. it's just like running up and down your, your plane with sandpaper and then, you know. Well, oh, I, I, I will tell you, landing. I forgot there was another uh, another part, too. Um, there, we have a new member out there. And he uh, showed up, and um, of course I'm a club instructor as well. So he uh, he was looking at my L39 from Free Wing, and he was talking to me about it. And finally, he figured out that you know as he was going down the line and asking people and talking to him, he ran into the president, and you know they're like, "Oh, we'll go talk to Mike. He's an instructor." So they came down, and he asked me if I. He said, "I just bought one, and uh, I just I, I have a, a Motion RC, um, the brand new L39, and and I want a maiden it today." And I was like, "Yeah, perfect. Let's do it. It flies great." Matter of fact, Mike can testify. I, I told him about you know you coming down and not really having any experience uh, flying you know EDFs, and he just jumped right on it and and within a couple of flights had it land in it and taken off on his own. So I told him I was like, well, as long as it's set up really well, you know, everything will everything will go fine. And See, like, at okay. least you said that. I mean, Jay would just <laughs> Jay would just let it be whatever it is. He wouldn't even say that. He would just go That's like, true. okay, let's go, let's take this off. <laughs> No, he would actually say, did you set it up well? And the guy would be like, yeah, sure. And they'd go, okay. Yeah, right. He wouldn't <laughs> check it. Right. In the meantime, his elevator's going backwards or they're both going different directions. Jay's like, hey, man, you said you set it up. I thought that's how it went. No, it would be more like, are you sure that elevator's supposed to go that way? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie, <laughs> if you say so. Um, exactly. Well, that's why you never made an airplane with Jay around. Oh no, I I, I trust I trust it. I trust Jay to help me made my plane. I just make sure that I'm yeah, actually too. not. I'm actually telling him the truth about that. I set the plane up, and the yes, CG's right, and you know that's exactly. my. That I checked all my surfaces. <laughs> yeah, not and just wiggle the, the like sticks, to... which I have done he, also. Yes. I just wiggle the and, sticks, and then that. 
And it, it's like, oh, it looks like this, the surfaces are moving. But negative moving reinforcement that. is a great learning tool. <laughs> yeah, it one. sure I is. I don't know it's why you guys are very strong about that. It served me well in the Air Force, and it served me well now. So, hey. Well, uh, anyway, this guy comes out, and uh, we walked out to the flight line. We checked it out. You know, he taxied out. Uh, it actually tracks straight everything. He did a great job setting it up. It looks fantastic. He took off. He's flying it around. He's like, wow, this thing is really stable. Everything is exactly like you said it was. It just, it's a great flyer. And he comes in and just lands it perfect. So, you know, I congratulated him, told him, you know, hey, good job. And, and so, Later on in the afternoon, he comes by and he says, hey, I was going to fly this thing again. Do you mind, you know, kind of watching me again? And I'm like, no, no, no problem at all. So we ran out to the box and he taxied out <laughs> and uh, we're rolling down the runway and he's like pulling back on the elevator, nothing. And he never really said anything. You know, it's kind of one of those things and I'm, I'm like, wow, man, he's really getting the speed up to get this airplane off the ground. But he never said I have no elevator or it's not rotating or anything, or I would have said abort, right? <laughs> and uh, Mike has heard that before. If yeah. it's not going right or something's wrong with it, abort the takeoff, you know, my aircraft, all that kind of good stuff. He never said it. Well, about three quarters of the way down the runway, the airplane slowly, the nose comes up and man, it's off and running. And I was like, well, I guess he just was a little nervous about pulling it off oh, or maybe no. the battery was a little heavier. Oh, no. I don't know what was going on. <clears throat> so anyway, he makes this turn, and the turn is not as pretty as it was the first time around. And uh, so all of a sudden, he pulls the power just to idle. Because I said, I told him, basically, on this airplane, if anything happens, pull the power to idle. The airplane will you know, slow way down, and then you should have everything should be fine. So you know, sure enough, he pulls the the power to idle. And I go, Oh, he goes, something's not right. And I go, Oh, okay. Now, now we're on a downwind and it, you know, and all of a sudden now I have no idea. Cause he's just like, something's not right. And I go, well, what's wrong? He goes, it's not. And this is really tough, especially as an instructor. Cause you have to like pick his brain to figure this out. And you know, you're kind of like, okay, well, what's wrong with it? Is it, uh, is it turning to the left? Is it turning to the right? Is it, he's like, I don't know. It's something's wrong. Something's wrong. And I, at that point, I was like, do I take the radio? Do I try yes. to save it? What? <laughs> but he was doing such a good job. The airplane's just slowly coming down. And I said, well, if something's wrong, let's go ahead and land. And he's like, yeah, good idea. So he starts to turn, <laughs> and the airplane starts coming down. And I go, is, are you going to Does he still have gear? no power in it? No, he's he's just idle. And I go, are you go I said, you need to pitch up a little bit. He goes. I don't have any elevator. <laughs> I go, you're a plane. I, mean, I, did. I, I At that point, I was like, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. He's like, it's not responding. And I go, well, don't put the gear down. Just let it let it come down. You have ailerons. You just don't have, uh, you know, elevator. But the airplane was, was perfectly level. It was right. coming down. Well, it was coming down a little faster than he wanted it to because his battery was a little bit heavier and was a little bit further forward. And I told him when I took it out there, I said, this is a little nose heavy for me. I think I would move my battery back a little bit. And he's like, well, it's right on the CG and it balances perfect. I said, well, it's fine. But in my instance, I've slid mine back about that much more, you know, just a couple of centimeters more. So anyway, it was, it flies a lot. Oh, Jay, it flies a lot like yours with the big batteries in it. Right. What, what are those, 6,000 milliamp batteries? Uh, yeah, they're uh, like 5,500s, I think. Yeah, so they're big. I mean, they're big bricks. Anyway, so his has his nose down attitude, and it did a lot like yours. And he got it to about 25 feet, and I think in his mind he thought, I don't want it going out in the desert, so I'm just going to turn back towards the runway. So he did. He rolled it, and when he did, the nose dropped, and it came down and, and hit the ground. And it cartwheeled. Parts, you know, you just see things flying off of it. And I was like, oh, man. You know, <laughs> That's this is brutal. Brand new. So uh, we went and picked it up. Uh, kudos to Motion RC because that airplane came away with, like, two scrapes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Wow. He really? is gonna, he's he's, he's going to have to make one order. He's going to have to order the tanks underneath because one of them got scraped up. Uh, not, not the, yeah, the tank got scraped up, but the, the mounts where they go on, that tore. And then um, the other thing is that it uh, it flipped over and slid, and so it ground off the top of the rudder part, you know, where it kind of comes over, um, which both are fixable. A little light spackling work, and it's fine. 
Um, and so I picked it up and we walked back and we set it on the bench and, you know, we're like messing around with it. Couldn't figure it out. I, I got my servo tester, plugged it in. It was really starting to grate on my nerves that I could not figure this out. And uh, anyway, Gary, this other guy that flies with us, he uh, comes walking over and he's, you know, putting his two cents worth. Hey, you know, did you try this? Did you try this? Is there, you know, these, there's something that's disconnected back here. And I go, well, that's pretty much impossible because it's one cord. You know, they make a lead the demon line. demon cortex like wasn't on, was it, Mike? Uh, he wasn't on a demon cortex. <laughs> He didn't use one. Okay. Uh, he had a different, he had the one that uh, motion sells the Eagle tree or whatever it is. But anyway, um, I picked the airplane up and looked into the, into the, the intake. And what do I see about right in front of the, the motor is three little wires hanging down, all cut to, to smithereens. Oh, it got sucked into oh, the intake and got no. sliced. huh? Yeah, so oh, I will wow. tell all of you people that listen to us, if you have a motion RC airplane, they give you a long metal tube for a re or a long metal um, rod for a reason because where you feed your wires is not through where the air intake is. It's through a little bitty hole that they've drilled in the upper foam to hold the wires up above where the intake is. Wait, but how do you feed them through to get them in the tube? It's it's just a square cutout in the phone oh, that you oh, have okay. to feed. You it shove to. your so, servo thing. Okay, because okay. okay. I was wondering how Correct. did how did he cut his wires since you know it goes in that it goes in that tube thing. That was weird. He okay, missed now the I got tube. It. Right. Gotcha. He missed the tube. He just went right. It, so they came out and they come out in front of the the EDF right. fan. Yeah. And he just turned the corner and went right to the front of the airplane. So the first flight went well. Second flight finally pulled those wires far enough back that they just went chop chop. <laughs> So I, I took the two out of the cockpit and I just gave them a little bit of tug and I pulled them all the way out and they were just shredded. It looked like somebody, it looked like a rat had chewed through the thing, you know? <laughs> and I looked in there and I go, see that, see that little hole up at the very top. That's where the wire should come through. So lucky for him, he still had a rudder because that was the third wire that was hanging there. And uh, when I showed it to him, he was like, oh, man, how did I miss that? And I'm like, well, I don't know, but that could have been pretty devastating if you would have chewed all your wires through. <laughs> Would have been on much because at least he still had a rudder. I don't know how much it helped him, but you know anything without an elevator. But it chewed both elevators because you know it comes with two, one on each side. Yeah, well, if it, and, it, uh, if it just chewed one and the other, would have been a quicker destruction. So, well, it depends. Uh, if the other one was still working, he would have been able to get. Yeah, it he could have fought the aileron. Mm -hmm. He would have fought the roll with it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the airplane's got a really tiny, you know, it's too small. It would have made it sporty. Anyway. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, it would have been, been sporty. <laughs> but I, I, I probably, at that point, he would have said, here, help me. And I could have taken the radio and got it. Yeah. Right yeah. Whereas, help me, Mike. Help when me. he says, I have no elevator, I'm like, you're pretty much on your own, buddy. It's going down. <laughs> Take it over, Mike. You got this. <laughs> yep, you got it. Going down. You got all well, 10 feet. anyway, that was the other funny story. The rest of the time, it went pretty well. Um, uh, I don't think he thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, maybe I should refine that. It wasn't a funny story. It was just one of the incidents that we kind of ran into. A learning moment. Bad, anyway. as we, like, it was, it was a learning moment. moment. Yeah. <laughs> it was a learning moment. Well, Tim, we didn't mean to, uh, you know, to <laughs> talk over you there, but uh, you're welcome to join our conversation. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you uh, kind of got into uh, the podcasting world. Well, actually, I – started listening to a podcast that was based out of uh, Galesburg, Michigan, which is really close to where I used to live. And uh, Crash Hancock was a co-host on that. And uh, the the two guys that started that, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank as to the name of it now. It's been, what, 10 plus years ago. We all have that problem. We're getting old. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> I Mike can't was what I had for dinner. Yeah, I I think I might remember that. But uh, <laughs> the uh, Mike was a, a co-host on that, and then the guys, the two guys that were doing it, was a father and son, and they decided they wanted to go back to uh, you know just the father and son thing. So Mike launched out on his own and started his own podcast called the Crash Cast. And he had uh, a co-host, uh, uh, Dennis Fishbeck. Um, his uh, his uh, username was uh, Dorsal. And so uh, they were doing the show for a while, and Dorsal passed away. Uh, 
And he, so Mike brought on another co-host, uh, Ron Bo, Ron Stubblefield. And, and then Ron got, uh, work related stuff going on. And, and so Mike was looking for another co-host and he put out a, a call and I had met him at the, uh, Toledo show. Uh, he was with the, the flat boys. I don't know if you're familiar with the flat printer or not, but, um, it's a CNC foam cutter, and I was into right. yeah, I am building blue. Yeah, Mike, Mike used to have one, I think, right? Or he built um, something. No, I right? built an, uh, a CNC cutter out of a plotter, but okay. I used oh, some of right. the I used some of the stuff that they talked about yeah. uh, to to make my designs. Yeah, right. yeah. So I, you know, it was one of those things that I wasn't real familiar with any CNC, so I went ahead and bought a uh, a flat printer one and uh, met. Met Crash at the uh, Toledo show, and one thing led to another. And anyway, I told him, "Hey, I'm interested in, in being a co-host." And he said, "Sure, come on board." So uh, it was him uh, and, and uh, Tim King, uh, I Fly OS, and then uh, me, and then uh, he also brought um, Carl Kettler on at the same time. And so it was the four of us for a while, and. We did the crash cast. I think the crash cast was like seven years total. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And Mike went in for an appendectomy, appendectomy about three years ago and uh, came out. Uh, he found out he was stage four with colon cancer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And I, I have to tell you, if you haven't, if you never met Mike uh, Crash Hancock, you know, your life is a little bit less for not having met the guy. He was just one of those people that just magnetic drew people to him and, uh, was, was fun to listen to him on the show. He always had a smile for everybody and in a, in a kind word. So, yeah. um, anyway, so he's, we did that for a long time. And then, uh, when he had to step away to deal with his cancer treatment and, and whatnot, uh, we, we went on and created the angle of attack podcast. Uh, one of the other co-hosts at the time was, uh, Lane stair. Um, and he chose not to, not to go on with the, with the angle of attack, but, uh, he had, he was kind of the mastermind behind the crash cast secret Santa. And gotcha. now Lane, Lane is, uh, of Lane's planes. Lane's correct? planes. That's correct. Yeah. Same person. Yeah. Uh, the, the kudos and the, I, he's, right. he's got, he's, he's got some pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, Head on over there. Yeah, we we always give him a shout out because, like I, I think I told you before when we were chit chatting uh, before the show. But um, I have some of the his desk, um, you know, organizers and stuff, yeah. and we we uh, just gave him a shout out on our uh, Black Friday episode that said, "Hey, go go grab some of those if you don't have them." Right. I always I always encourage people to go to those smaller vendors, the guys that are. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see it, but uh, Jay's holding up his hard luck award from Lane's Planes because yeah, they got that the, uh, he, he crashed Mike's, uh, Mike's airplane at the uh, Holly Springs <laughs> event that we went to. And they actually walked up and handed him the hard, the hard luck award. And I said, that's not fair. It's not even your airplane, right? You know, he crashes somebody else's airplane and gets the award. Yeah. That's, so. shouldn't Mike get that at least? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. But anyway, they give it to Jay. Yeah. <laughs> I got, well, some, I got something for... better. I got a new fuselage. That's what I got. That's out right. Of it. No, okay. <laughs> he got good. a whole new fuselage out of it. it as long as Jay paid for it, we're good to go. Yes, that is exactly what happened. Because Mike <laughs> and I had uh, tried to maiden that a couple of times and put a, a few dents in it while we were trying to maiden yeah. it. So this was uh, this was a good exchange. And, and quite frankly, it was flying well um, after we Jay and I spent some time fixing it up. And then I correct. guess Mike burned out the escape or something because he was flying at last. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if that was my fault. <laughs> yeah. somehow I, I have to bring it around to that i know yeah no i always i always like to to give a shout out to those to those smaller vendors like ra cores and um west michigan park flyers um uh foam flight uh steve mills up in uh, minnesota and uh there's i think there's there, there's bunches of other ones i'm sure out there but those are you know those are some of the the folks that supported us when we were when we were doing the podcast and they would donate prizes or whatever and just participated it was it's a lot of fun to get to to meet those guys um it's kind of funny because ari cores uh jim he actually looks like santa so 
He's oh, got okay. nice, nice white beard and the whole the whole nine yards. So that's funny. So if you want to get your secret Santa from him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more authentic than you realize. Yeah, it, exactly. And he's he's one of those guys. It's always fun to catch up with him. I live pretty close to um, Triple Tree Aerodrome in South Carolina. Um, I'm, I live about a three hour drive. I'm in North Carolina, but he uh, he always comes down in Nall. So it's it's fun to to go to Nall. I didn't get there this year, uh, but uh, it's fun to go down there and just. He's always got an extra chair in the booth. He's usually building an airplane uh, while he's at a show, and that's just right. loves to loves to sit and chat with people. So, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, part of the reason that we're talking about the Secret Santa is uh, I had mentioned it on the Black Friday uh, episode that we had, right? Uh, and then uh, that. We had recorded that right around Thanksgiving, I think, uh, because yeah. it was it was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and I had mentioned it because, um, you know, we have listeners from all over the world, and and we had uh, been at this Holly Springs, and somebody had mentioned um, that they had gotten a prize from a Secret Santa, and so I was like, oh, what is a Secret Santa thing? And I mentioned it on the air. Well, about a day later, I get this email that says, "Today's the last day. Hurry up." And that, that's literally what it said. It was an email. And I'm like, what do I do with this email? And they go, oh, sorry. If you're not familiar with this, you need to send your name and your address to this email. And, it, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, what is <laughs> I still don't understand, you know. So I send my name and address out to this Secret Santa thing. In my head, I'm thinking I'm going to get information back on Here's the way the program is, blah, blah, blah. You know, that no. No, you joined instead, up, man. <laughs> yes. Instead, I get an, an email from a lady named Barb who says, and she has a, what is Dr. Uh, Mrs. Dirtnapper? Mrs. Dirtnapper, yeah. yeah. Mrs. Dirtnapper. Yep. Anyway, I get an email back that says, okay, great. Thank you. And your victim will be on the, on the way. Right. And I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> I, Jay and I have known each other for a long time, and we talk about victims. It's usually not a good thing. So, <laughs> in this particular case, it is. So, yeah. No, what you do is, my family does not know how to buy anything RC for me. Uh, uh, welcome to the club. Exactly. Shocking. There are very few shocking. of us now. Just Mrs. Dirtnapper knows to, knows what to buy for her husband. There are there's gotcha. a, a few few families out there that you know they they fly together, uh, but you know my wife doesn't know and quite frankly doesn't really care so she uh she doesn't really want to go out and buy it and you know if i need something i just order it I, you know it's just sure. one of those things i think all of us are kind of that way pretty much so i it was it's fun though to get a new toy rc toy under the tree and that's what this is. It, it's simply RC people buying RC stuff, and, and and it's the premise is pretty simple. It's just you you got to spend at least fifty dollars. The the minimum is fifty bucks. If you want to spend a thousand, feel free. You're probably going to get something that's worth you know fifty or sixty bucks. But <laughs> if, so wait, the turbine the turbine that I'm sending my guy is uh, I'm not going to get reciprocated. Is what you're saying? <laughs> Possibly not. Kept it. Possibly not. So, <laughs> you know, but last year I got a uh, Maytech flight controller for, uh, you know, flight stabilizer for flying wing. And uh, I can I can actually flash it with uh, iNav and add a GPS and turn it into a full on, you know, flight controller. Very nice. Yeah, uh, I like those controllers. Those are good ones. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it was it's really cool. And I am notorious for not being able to fly wings very well. So. <laughs> I, I lose orientation on them or something. It's I've I've no had this kidding. love hate relationship with flying wings, hmm. but it, and launching them. I if any of uh, my previous listeners are listening to this, they're probably laughing because they know my my troubles with with launching wings. But there you go. Um, so you know it's so, just fun. so wait. So so let me understand this. Mm -hmm. So basically, you send your name and address so that you and, can then. And the stuff that you like, what you're into. So if you're into right. if you're into quadcopters right. or something, you say, "Hey, I'm into I'm into flying racing okay. quads or whatever," so that somebody okay. knows a little bit about you. And then this is where the victim status comes in: is you go and stalk your person. You find them on on Facebook. You find them in RC groups. You take a look at what they've been posting recently and all of that stuff. 
and then you go find something that they want. So, uh, I had, I had a victim a couple years ago who was really tough to buy for because he had an online presence only in that he had an account on RC groups and he had a Facebook <laughs> account, but he never posted anything. He's a ghost. He, he really was. It was tough. Um, so I, I know it wasn't me because I haven't joined the secret center thing, but, <laughs> right. but I'm his twin. I'm his, do- I'm, yeah. I'm his doppelganger. Yeah. Know. Yeah, so exactly. I I managed to I managed to find a couple people that knew him enough to make I, I suggested a couple of things uh, along with what he had requested or what he what he said he was into and found a a really cool airplane for him and he he ended up just loving it so in wow. that regard it was it was fantastic um, you know last year I was I was able to buy a an airplane for, for my victim who it, it hadn't even come out yet. So I had to send him, I sent him a receiver and, uh, and a thing that said, Hey, your airplane's coming, but, uh, here's, here's a box to open for Christmas. And, uh, the, I guess they shipped it out in like February, but that was fun. Uh, Cause I knew he didn't have that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. It just uh, nice. got released or whatever. Yeah. The premise of this basically stems from, obviously you said earlier that people that, you know, can't, figure out how to buy it and um jay and i and mike maybe not mike but jay and i are both in the same box our wife could care less what we do and, right. uh so i i I, w- I wanted to clarify that mrs dirt napper did get back with me after she probably <laughs> saw the email that was kind of like okay thanks you know and then she said hey i just listened to your she joined our, our listeners group and said hey i listened to your podcast i didn't even realize you were a podcast guy right and then when I heard you say you don't know anything about it, let me bring you up to speed. So yep. she was nice enough to do that and and basically kind of reiterate what you just said about how much it is and what you you know kind of have to do. Right. But I was under the assumption that I had to buy airplanes, and so it wasn't until I got in touch with uh, Tim that Tim suggested, "Oh no, you know if you have a victim that's sent to FPV, he's not going to like airplanes, or I mean, he may or may not, but right. what if he's into helicopters or trucks or whatever, then that's the point of the stalking, right? You go yep. out there and try to find out what they really want. Yeah, and and that's just it. You find out what they're flying right now, what they're you know kind of what they're doing. You know, me personally, I've been into I've been flying mostly FPV for the last. I don't know, two years, uh, fixed wing FPV. Um, yeah, I enjoy quadcopters, but I, I just haven't gotten the hang of them, uh, right. to, to really fly them well. So I, I enjoy going up. I am a, a full scale pilot. So it, the FPV thing kind of scratches that itch a little bit to me. <laughs> so sure. Yeah, I, you know what? I can fly FPV, but you know more so than most people think I can yeah. because I am a full scale pilot as well, and that's what I do for a living. Right. So when I get in there and do it for them, they're like, "Wow, how are you so good at this?" I go, "Well, it's pretty much kind of what I do all day, <laughs> right?" You know, it, so I, I totally get that. The, the The biggest challenge with flying FPV is is altitude, holding your altitude. Yeah. Um, but other than that, if you flow, if you can fly a line of sight, you can. You can fly it. You can land it. It's, you know, you know what it's supposed to look like. It it does feel a little weird when you're, you know, coming down on, on final approach, but I, I truly love flying FPV. It's, it's one of the coolest feelings to me. And I, I know some people are just like, I don't, I don't get it, but that's what I love about (laughs) RC. There is so much to do in RC. That's something for everyone. Oh yeah. This is true. You know, one of my one of my former co-hosts, uh, Tim King, he he'll go out and fly uh, a half a racer, which there is no throttle. It's a it's a half a engine, and it it screams. Thing is doing a hundred plus miles an hour uh, pylon racer, and it'll fly for about two minutes or so, and then it runs out of fuel. And wherever it runs out of fuel, you better make the field. <laughs> kind of like a pulse jet. That's yeah. I looked at some, some pulse jets before. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, there's that. And then, you know, uh, well, like, you, Mike, you were talking about just being at events. I It's so much fun to go yeah. to to go to go events. I was at Seth and Hafey this year and got to see some friends I hadn't seen in a few years. And it was it was just a good time. And it's, it's fun to get together with people that love to do this stuff as much as me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I so uh, back to the Santa thing. Yeah. It's uh, you become when you send your name in, or when I sent my name in, I became 
uh, or I, I received a victim. Yep. But I, I became a victim as well. Yep. Correct. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, I think Mrs. Durnapper, she, uh, she assigns that they're kind of, they're yeah. still doing that. Or, uh, I think she's in charge of it or whatever she, she does. You'll have to bring us up, bring yeah. us up to speed, how that whole, that whole transaction happened. But, uh, I did get a box in the mail, uh -huh. um, just yesterday, I think, or the day before. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, this, this is recording a little bit before Christmas Eve, but I did get mine, and we, on the on the outside of it, it basically says uh, <laughs> Secret Santa, no E O W. So one, no, I'm not really quite, no E O W. That means that. no early opening weenies. Okay, you don't get to open your present early. So oh, yeah, all right. I got so. mine. I got mine yesterday as well, and I saw it came from an RC vendor who I have purchased from before, but I knew I hadn't ordered anything recently, and I didn't see the no <laughs> early opening weenie on the side of the box. Gotcha. But I I handed it to my son, and I'm like, I I was gonna have him open it and see if it was wrapped inside, and if it wasn't, then just tape it back up. But then I turned the box over, and I saw the no EOW. So okay, uh, I got gotcha. so. Our, the the first present in the uh, Walker household it was uh, my secret Santa gift to this year. So oh, very nice, nice. Yeah. very nice. But not so how did how did the whole EOW thing come about? <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what the origin was that of that. Other than we were talking on the show, and um, you know. Somebody, I think, said, you know, do I get to open it when I get it in the mail? And and the answer was absolutely not. You get to open it when you normally open your Christmas presents. So if yeah, if you're doing it so. Christmas Eve or you're doing it Christmas Day, whatever, uh, you get to do it that way. But but and then, you know, one of the jokes, uh, you know, came up with no early opening weenies. And <laughs> so that just became a thing as well. And I, before, you know, before I forget again, uh, the dirt nappers have been fantastic about putting this together uh, the last few years because as, as cool as it sounds, there's always some problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. You know, there was the logistics. The logistics for worldwide do, doing this worldwide are, just have to be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's hey, are you willing to ship internationally? Kind of thing. You know, th right. those are some of the questions that they they would like you to answer when you sign up. And um, you know, I I'm willing to do it if if it needs to be because I there's a there's a few vendors in you know uh, China or whatever that'll ship somewhere else too, so I can. Right. You know, they're not going to kill you on the shipping, but, uh, we can, we can find something like that. But, you know, you always have some little drama. I think last year, uh, somebody sent in, uh, a, you know, sent, sent in their name and stuff and then ended up getting this box of, of a pretty cool, pretty cool gift, but didn't realize he was signing up for Secret Santa, which I don't understand. But what he, <laughs> What he did was, he's like, "Oh, you got? I gotta buy something for somebody else." Yeah, so yeah, yeah. he sends an email to 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 Barb and says, "Hey, can I just forward this on to the person that um, I got?" And it turned out that you know that person wanted similar stuff to what he wanted, so it worked out pretty well uh, in yeah, that sure. regard. And then there's you know every once in a while you get somebody that doesn't send, won't didn't send a gift, and so you know somebody got shortchanged and. They spent some sure. time chasing that down. So if you're participating, <laughs> I, I was a little surprised that you got in on it this year because it was sort of only open to people that had done it before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was that was kind of the, the gist, but um, she must have liked you enough to let you in. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm not really sure. I, I have to thank Nick Turner because he probably sent her a note that said, Hey, oh. you know, these guys are running a podcast. They just, you know, gave us a shout out. So we need to put him in. Yeah. And, and, and I was, I was actually mentioning, mentioning it because I did not know it was still going on. Oh, the okay. three of us were talking about it and I was like, man, that'd be a great idea for our podcast yeah. to be able to kind of reach out. Cause I knew that, uh, you know, I mean, you and I talked before, but when you're kind of doing your own podcast, it becomes this huge thing and, and, you know, kind of following everybody else and getting in with them. It's yes. kind of behind the scenes, you know, I mean, I, 
I, I, editing and you know, videoing and attending stuff and taking care of all this stuff is a, a little overwhelming and researching at times. So exactly. And so, uh, yeah, researching topics and that kind of thing. And, and we do fairly good at that, but I, I just, you know, listening to other podcasts, yep. Mike's pretty good about it, but I, I just got so much stuff going on. So, uh, I had thought that the program no longer existed. And that's why I had mentioned it because I was like, hey, that's a great thing for us to kind of participate in or kind of see if we can. I don't know how that whole thing worked, but yeah. that would have been a great thing for our podcast uh, as our crew to just say, hey, look, you know, what does it take to do a Secret Santa? Sure. Not realizing it's still going. Yeah. So Nick so, Turner So, Mike, out. If, we're, if we're in next year, um, I, I mean, I assume what's going to happen is you're going to tell us who you got. And then all three of us will stalk this person and decide what to send them for, as a podcast <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know, gift. I no, mean, I just, actually might be able to do that, but Mike, Mike asked me about it and I know who his secret Santa victim is. And is uh, I was able to, uh, supply some, some good Intel for him. But yeah, that's, that's one of the fun things is talking about there, there's 7 billion people on the planet. There's six billion nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine people that can know who your victim is the only <laughs> the only person that can't know who your victim is is the victim himself so right, right. <laughs> it's just well, and, you know, I like it's just and when tim and i were talking about the show prior you know prior to the, our taping the show um that's he was asking me about it and i was like oh i don't know should i am i supposed to tell am i i don't know if i'm allowed to tell you that because i don't really know the rules but i yeah. got someone he's like is it me? And I go, no. He goes, yeah, you can tell me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I was kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know. And he goes, well, if you tell me and I know the person or I know of the person or where his stuff is, I can kind of lead you down that path. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, you know, because I just basically got an email that said, here's your guy. Here's his email ad or here's his address. Yep. Uh, and he loves RC. So, right. you know, and I'm so like, this is what do I do? We are, you know, I'm tough to buy for because if you ask me about just about anything that flies RC, I probably got it sitting in my garage here. Cause yeah, me too. I, you know, I've got a pile of stuff I don't fly, but, mm. you know, so it's one of those things. It's fun to, you know, it, it's fun to talk to other people who know that person or, you know, get to know, get to know them a little bit and, and, you know, I made some really good friends that I've never met or only seen once because of this, this IRC hobby. So, well, and I have to, I have to give a shout out to Barb because she did reach out to me on several emails. Uh, she did uh, listen to uh, an episode. And so she's kind of like, oh, wow, I didn't know you guys did a podcast. And so she kind of brought me up to speed. And actually, that's how we got in touch with you is that she said, if you're interested in seeing this, I can talk to you about it. But the person to go to really is, you know, Tim Walker. And so we appreciate you, um, you know, coming on and, and being a part of our podcast. And I'm going to extend to you. I know the other two guys will, too. But you are welcome as a special host or if you want to join us anytime. Oh, that'd be welcome. fun. That'd be fun. I, yeah. I, it's, you know, like you said, it's a lot of work and, and I've, there are times where I miss it and there's times where I'm like, man, I'm glad I don't have to do this show this week. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Jay has, I think that Jay is that, that all the time. Yeah. Though, right. He's like, Whew, I don't have to edit this week. Yeah. I'm so, I, I'm not relieved. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I believe that everybody should just share the wealth or get the, no, opportunity to edit. Yes. yes. Special edits. Okay. Tom that's, Sawyer. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I I completely agree with you because until you have edited the show about four times, yes. you yes. don't know the pain that the person that does edit it goes through every week. Or you guys, well, you guys I, record I, every other week, right? Uh, yeah, week. Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah, we, and we, we share. And we weeks. share. I, I unfortunately, uh, Mike and Jay have been really doing the majority of the lion's share of the editing recently. Yeah. But um, we've all edited shows mm -hmm. at some point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. we all, we all shared it on angle of attack. Uh, crash used to do the editing, but he was, um, uh, he, you know, he and his wife had decided when they had kids that, uh, she would work and he was going to be stay at home dad. And so he oh, was, wow. he was wow. home, uh, with kids and had a little more time to get the show edited and posted in a timely fashion. So he ended up doing it, but, uh, yeah, that's the way you know, Jay, I try, Jay I has just, more I time try with that. us. Yeah, Jay does have more time with us. But let me tell you, <laughs> I'm going to throw him under the bus. If the episode is due on Christmas Eve, 
He will be up at 4.45 when the episode's due, <laughs> editing it. <laughs> and and no offense, but, you know, mine, mine are done like the day we finish. It's already in the can. I don't know why you guys have a it's problem with that. Yeah. And, I like and to work under kno- pressure, man. I know he does it to me on purpose because he knows that at, at midnight, the night before the podcast is supposed to come out, I'm in here pacing around, looking <laughs> online. Are you, did you need help? Are you going to, I got it, bro. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it was kind of funny. Uh, I know we're kind of coming up on our hour here, but, uh, the first year that we did this, I, I did 28 episodes and we yeah. did it in a year. And, uh, I, I got the next year going around. I told, I told Jay, I said, look, dude, I'm working. You're not, you're retired. <laughs> this is, this is way one sided. So I said, this next episode, you're going, you're going to edit it. I'll, I will show you how to do it, but you're going to do it. And uh, he waited to the last second, as always. And then he called me almost in tears and said, man, I am so sorry. <laughs> I did <laughs> yeah. not realize I had how no hard idea. this was. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you guys put your show together a little differently than we did too. So it's, sure. I, it's, I would, I would be interested in seeing your workflow on it, but uh yeah, uh, it's it was fun. I when I, I hadn't I wasn't familiar with your show either when uh, when Barb sent me the the message and mm-hmm. uh, so I went and listened to I think it was an October show. You were talking about uh, um, a jet uh, flying that you had. oh the jet rally yeah. yeah the jet rally right yeah. and it's just it was fun to listen to. It, I, I really yeah. truly Thanks. enjoy it. So it's you can tell you guys are friends and, and enjoy flying. So uh, well, kudos to you. Appreciate that. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We uh, we started this as a labor of love, and it's just kind of stuck that you know way ever since. And uh, and Jay and I talk pretty much on a daily basis anyway uh, about RC or whatever whatever the topic is when one of us is uh, you know angry at at, at the world, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it seems to work that way. It started with our kids, you know, because we our kids have known each other since they were tiny as well, okay. and we kind of grew. Up. Jay and I went to college together and kind of grew up, and uh, so we would gripe as we were yep. young parents would gripe about our kids growing up. And so uh, it, then they became millennials and now it was all about, <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know? So we, uh, we had this, I think I told you, um, you know, it was kind of a challenge given to us to do this podcast. And so I told Jay, I was like, you know, we're talking every day anyway, how do we record this? And so we finally, the first, first couple were a little rocky and we were all set up for it, but now it's kind of gotten to the point after <laughs> we're coming to our fifth season. So this will be our fifth year. Yeah. Uh, it's a little more polished, a little better equipment, and uh, yeah, the yes. workflow is not quite probably what it should be, but we we managed to pull it off. So we appreciate your input. <laughs> uh, it's it, yeah, that's one of those things. I Crash and I were good friends. Uh, we would call and talk to each other and be on the phone for two hours. Right. Uh, he knew if he got a call from me at about six or six thirty in the evening that I was driving home from work and that we had exactly thirty minutes to talk. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was one of those things. That's he'd be, way it works for me. He'd be fixing yeah. dinner or something like that, and, and he'd be, all right, let's go. But, uh, <laughs> it was. you know, I tried to stay at home dad uh, when when I was younger. I looked at my wife and said that to you, you know, yeah. hey, how about you work and I stay at home dad? And uh, she said, how about, you, how about you're a uh, divorced stay at home dad? How about that? <laughs> yeah. I said, okay. That's, I've been trying but to get my wife so to well. keep me in the manner to which I've become accustomed, but uh, that is that is true. Not, She's not the yet. one that supports my hobby. Yeah. 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 No. So she work, she'll tell everybody I work to support his hobby. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, uh, this, this whole secret Santa and, uh, the dirt nappers kind of put this thing together yep. in, in memory of crash, if I'm not mistaken. Well, they continued it in memory of crash. Oh, gotcha. It was, it was a thing before, well, before crash passed away, we, we did it, uh, on the crash cast for a few years, at least before, um, before the end of the show. But, um, you know, I'm sure that next year when Christmas comes around, uh, we would be more than happy to extend to your listeners, uh, the, you know, how to get into it. And, uh, I, I would love to see it blossom into something bigger, although, I'm not the one that's administrating it either. <laughs> yeah, I was so. say, and he's not the guy not, answering all the emails nor sending anything out. Exactly. I, you know, I I'm, volunteer you can contact all the time. him at timwalker.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's now funny. it was, uh, it was one of, the, it's one of those things that, uh, 
you know, I, I'm sure that the, the dirt nappers would be more than happy to get more, more people involved because Mike was a fantastic guy and to keep his memory alive is, is something that we feel is, is worth doing. So. Sure. Well, we, uh, this year, like I said, I jumped in right at the last second yep. and I do appreciate those guys that kind of got me in there. Yeah. Uh, we would love to, uh, you know, participate in that. And so, um, you know, this podcast is, is continuing to go out. And if, uh, you know, your listeners are willing to join up and, and get involved, we, we'd love that too. So yep. it, um, you know, it's a, a small world. It's shrinking. Uh, yes. The FAA just kind of put, you know, some restrictions on us. And I, and Jay and I talk about this all the time. We need, you know, new, younger blood that just isn't really, you know, it's not just falling into our lap like it used to when we were kids. Yeah. Uh, it was the thing to do. And uh, so, yeah, anything that can uh, that can help the hobby uh, and, you know, move us in that right direction, we, we would love to participate in. So, we, um, yeah. Yeah. We're thankful for them and the work that they do as well for the dirt nappers. So yeah. I'm looking forward to talking to Barbara a little bit more often. Yeah. Now they're, they're, they're great people too. I think they live in Missouri. So they, they're one of them. Missouri. They're people oh. that I, uh, that I count as friends that I've never met. So no kidding. Yep. Yeah. We, uh, that's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's so much fun to go to an event and meet, meet up with people. And that's, uh, you know, I met up with through the flat printer crew i met mm-hmm. up with uh, a fair number of people that i i would count as friends now too and that's how i met crash and um you know so getting involved in in the podcast scene and whatnot is is definitely worth doing because you'll make some some lifelong friends yeah you know it's funny you said that because uh, we this year decided after a couple of times we did podcasts for guys uh, the holly springs group they've kind of uh, Doug Leroy is uh, their president yeah. out there, and he kind of he kind of got involved with our podcast because we did a uh, an FPV episode, and he kind of jumped on us about some rules and regulations. And <laughs> w- at, at first, we were kind of like, "Holy cow!" You know, we didn't know this. And he was a little, whack, whack. yeah, he gave us a little whack on the nose there, yeah. and uh, doesn't re- he? He claims he doesn't remember it, and uh, I know he's listens to us, so shout out to him. But. Uh, <laughs> The funny part was Jay has a story about when we went out to Holly Springs. We kind of surprised Mike, and it was in one of our last episodes. But Jay said something to me about meeting Doug for the first time. He's a he's a big boy, <laughs> very tall. Well, so is Tim. Tim's what? What'd you say? You were six foot four. I'm right? six foot four. Uh, okay, Crash yeah. made me look little. <laughs> he was he was six foot seven. His son, holy smokes! His son is six foot eleven, I believe. Um, yeah, and I, you guys haven't met Lane, which is it was really pretty funny because uh, Tim King's like six one, Carl's six foot, Cathead is six two, I'm six four, so we're all really tall. And then Lane's like five six, maybe five seven. <laughs> so there's we've got a you know there was a picture of us with. With That's him hoisted awesome. over our heads and whatnot, we uh, we had we had somebody refer to him as Tiny Dancer once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he enjoyed that. Oh yeah. That's so, funny. well, the funny part is, you know, we're we're able to view each other, you know, over the internet. You know, some people mm-hmm. go, you know, especially many of our listeners may go, "Hey, I thought you guys were all in the same room or you're you're together," but right. uh, yeah. but you know, we're far apart. Yeah. All of us are across the country, so you know, we can see each other while we're doing this. Um, but even though I, like I'm seeing you and then if I was to bump into you in the street, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't even recognize you because you would be way taller in my mind's eye. Cause I'm <laughs> thinking you're the same size as me or smaller or whatever. Right. And then, and then when I see you, I go, Oh, Oh man, this guy, I saw what he looks like and he doesn't look like anything like what I, what I saw, what I saw Amazing. on the internet. It, the internet's a yep. lie. <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> it's all <laughs> fake right. internet. It makes you look six inches know. smaller. I don't know. Well, Doug, Doug is tall. I think. Yeah. How tall? How tall do you think Doug is, Mike? He's probably six foot three. Yeah, least. easily. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, he, six, I'm three, six, six foot four. one, and and so I'm kind of like you, and and everybody, you know, in the six foot one world, and uh, and I had to look up to Doug as well. But the funny part is, we had him on the podcast, and he was doing, and he sat like, really you know, low in a chair. Yeah, he sat so he really low. Sm- <laughs> so he only so saw he like looked the top like of really like really tall. And when we keep, walked yeah, up exactly. to him, Jay just Jay stuck his hand out and went. Wow, he's tall. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was pretty funny. But um he's a great guy and almost everybody that has been a part of our podcast or, you know, at least um 
you know, hosted with us or, or done interviews or what have you have always been wonderful. So we, we do appreciate you taking your time and you're like I said, you're welcome back anytime. We'd love to have you as a part. And if your listeners are out there and they want to join us, man, more power to it. We do have a uh, Facebook listeners uh, page. I did uh, on your um, recommendation, join up for the angle of attack and the um, crash cast um, sites. Yeah. So we, uh, if it's okay with you, we'll post this site since you're on it. Absolutely. uh, If you want to pass it along to your listeners, maybe they can, uh, uh, grab a kind of that uh, nostalgia and, um, you know, the fact that this secret Santa is going on, we'd love to next year, you know, kind of be a part of that as well. And yeah. maybe we can promote that on our, you know, coming up. Cause I know that's, uh, that would be, that would be there. fantastic. Like I said, it, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just something to keep the memory of, of crash sure. alive. And, and quite frankly, it's a lot of fun, especially if you don't get that RC gift, uh, you know, my my daughter actually got me a tie. This is the first time I've ever gotten a tie for Father's Day this year. But <laughs> she got me a tie. It's got I'm, I'm an aeronautical engineer, so you know, gotcha. I I got aviation in my blood. But uh, it's an airplane tie, and it's got some some blueprint drawing stuff and and flight equations and things. It's it's really cool. But uh, if you're is it, is it blue with uh, gold or silver writing? Yes. In it? I have that time. Yes, actually. it's it's awesome. <laughs> I do. And I did get it for Father's Day one year for my kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Evidently, yeah. there's some Father's Day aviation shop you, you can go to as a kid <laughs> and find stuff like this. Yep. Because it seems to kind of filter through to those aviation people. Yes, so. exactly. So, you know, it, but it's just fun to get something that you know you're going to like under the tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Enough of the socks and uh, and fruit of the looms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, Although for some reason your wife always thinks you need better underwear, I don't know what that is, Bob. But uh, <laughs> I think it's because they might wash. Wait, why them, do I get so. another package of these every week? And she's just standing there looking <laughs> at me like, because I don't want to wash. Them. I don't know because I'm because <laughs> you're disgusting. You, you, <laughs> you've worn them three weeks in a row. You think they're gone? You think they're done? I don't know what you're thinking. You, you know? get four days out of the, the same pair, right? The front back back inside. Just keep turning them inside about? out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, I do, that we digressed. <laughs> yes, we did. No lo- the show is <laughs> no longer no longer for kids. Uh, kids, make sure you do your laundry and take a bath and stay off. <laughs> or husbands, whichever. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> or if you're husbands. Although, uh, you know, actually, you guys probably, uh, I had to shave. Or, you know, we were doing some stuff and I shaved today. But I, I, I had a big beard. We It was no shave. What would what'd you call it, Mike? No shave uh, November. Yeah. No shave November. Yeah. yeah. So Mike was trying really hard, but I noticed that uh, other than Jay, who has got the scruff going on, the rest of us look. Uh, uh, I'm pretty scruffy know. today. He's got a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, Nav's got a little That's bit of true. little something something going on there. I actually started off no shave November, no problem, and then uh, we had uh, got about mid month. A friend, a friend's that. mother died. <laughs> had to go to the funeral. My wife oh. said, "You are shaving to go to this yeah. funeral." So mm-hmm. I said, "Okay." You could have just shaved it into a goatee, and then you would have been like cool, at it, right? Uh, yeah. Beard. Other than the fact that my beard is getting really gray, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so mine too. I uh, I think I just <laughs> need to. I need just to need to forego. Yeah, shave it off. Shave it off. Yeah. So. I hear you. Well, not RC related, but uh, we can all uh, relate. <laughs> yes. So we appreciate it. We want to wish all of our listeners a very happy Merry Chris Kwanzaa. I think that pretty That's much right. covers everything, right? Christmas. Yep. Sure does. Like, uh, yeah. That's uh that's Jay's saying actually Chris Kwanzaa. But anyway, Fest- uh, wait, wait, yeah. I think Festivus is coming up pretty quick. So for those people who I think <laughs> like, Mike yeah, is put, a Festivus put a guy. Out Festivus. Yeah. yeah. He is going to break out his aluminum pole here yeah. in a day or two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and fortunately for him his feats of strength are with uh a 14-year-old kid, I think. So it's uh he's got a fighting chance. Or or whoever else is in your apartment building. I don't know who's who's over there. I haven't been to Mike's new apartment, so I don't know. Um, but anyway, to all your listeners, to all of our listeners, have a Merry Christmas, a very, very happy New Year. We uh, are coming into 2020. Hopefully, it'll be really exciting. Uh, I think the first event, um, January, is the, the war, Winter Warbirds here in uh, Phoenix. And then uh, right after that is the Electric Festival. So um, it's going to be a busy uh, spring, I think, for yeah, us. Yeah, Tim, Win- Tim we think we'll see you at the Electric Festival. Yeah, are you going to come on out? I would love to, but probably not. Why don't you guys? Oh, why don't you guys come to to Seth? 
We need to. We've uh, actually talked about that several times, and uh, every time something always happens, we're either working or uh, yeah. Jay's mom got sick and everything kind of fell apart. But uh, we definitely yeah. need to get some of these bigger events um, just because I think that would, uh, you know, kind of reach out and, and grab more listeners in our you know, podcast area. So. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I, it would be fun to do something just way out, you know, go uh, – sure go up to something in, in Washington state or come out to Arizona or something like that. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim Hanstein from Northwest RC is up in that area. So maybe if he's got something uh, on the books, cause he travels yeah. quite a bit too, but, uh, maybe we, we'll have to do that. We'll have to do something a little more central. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so everybody can get there. Actually, one of the it's, ones that I really want to do is flight fest, uh, in Ohio. Uh, these, yeah, I did the one, uh, I did the one in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got yeah, to I got to meet Lane there actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you know how short he is. Yeah. <laughs> you know why is it that I didn't know that? I did not realize that you met Lane. Oh huh. well, it was just a quick, you know, hi. We yeah. we didn't talk or anything. It's just uh, I saw I saw him and person. yeah. Uh, mostly, I was admiring his planes that he, he. I guess he always he has some kind of plane that he brings out to these events and yeah. uh, admired his planes. The the yeah. Cuda, yeah. If is he, it the cooter or the big flying cow? One of the two. Oh, the it was yeah. Norman. I think it was. Ginormous. I think it was the big. Yeah, I think it was the big Ginormous. flying. Yeah. <laughs> Ginormous. You don't fly Ginormous. that airplane. You suggest a way for it to go, and it sometimes <laughs> obeys. Sometimes. Oh my gosh! It, it is a typical cow. I, I think they yeah. used it this last year uh, at the Texas one as the target for combat flying. So. Oh wow. Okay. He was flying around, and then people were trying to crash into it, and you know, take it out. Yeah. For like not, yeah, like not possible, really, because it's huge. It's yeah, the thing was massive. Yeah, it was a real fun event. I thought. Yeah. Now he's he's really good at flying that thing, uh, but I've I've flown a couple of the other Normans, and they are just a handful to fly. So That's they're funny. they're fun to fly. The get the get one of the foam ones. They're a lot of fun because they, you know. If they fall out of the sky, whoop de doo, glue it together and throw right. it back in the air. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, that's the best kind. But well, if uh, people want to reach out to you, how do they contact you there, Tim? Uh, you can, <laughs> like Lane used to say, tjwalk at gmail.com. So <laughs> there you go. He, I won't say what he used to tell people to send me, but uh, <laughs> please don't send me that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but no, if you want to, if you want to contact me, that's uh, probably the easiest way. I I do get on the Crashcast and Angle Attack listener pages on Facebook occasionally. I'm not a huge Facebook user though, so. Um, yeah, that's uh, hey, join the club. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we all have that problem, and that may be the reason why nobody knows who we are. <laughs> uh, maybe yes, maybe no. I it's it you know just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a good job. So, well, we appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you so much. Lot. Well, unfortunately, our hour is up, but man, everybody should be enjoying their eggnog uh, this late this afternoon and into the morning. I think Santa's uh, going to arrive at our trees uh, with our. Secret Santa gifts, no early opening weenies for us. And, uh, man, it's been a pleasure to have Tim Walker on the show. We really appreciate it. your time. We know you're uh, kind of out on the East Coast and it's late for you. But, man, it was awesome. Come back anytime. Thank you. And like Crash used to say, uh, get out there and build something, fly something, and enjoy this great RC hobby. Absolutely. You're well, here. Thanks for joining us. All right. Well, I'm Michael from Arizona. I'm Jay from the hills of Texas. And I'm AK Mike in Texas. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review, and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah.